We've all seen things in movies we wished we could actually buy. Like a little liquid luck from Harry Potter, that cool hoverboard from Back to the Future, or some dinosaur from Jurassic Park. I regret nothing. Well, in this video, I'm taking some of your favorite movies and shows and bringing their best creations to life as brands you could actually buy from the store. And here we go. First up, we're tackling Mr. Ping's noodles. Now, besides being the father of the dragon warrior, Jack Black, Mr. Ping runs the hippest restaurant in the entire village. It also seems to be the only restaurant in the entire village. Noodles. His claim to fame, though, is his delicious secret ingredient noodle soup. So as a shrewd businessman, if Ping was around today, I think he'd jump at one of the biggest opportunities for noodle makers, selling them to poor college students. That's why I'll be making an instant noodle cup version of Mr. Ping's secret ingredient soup. Since he's obviously the star of his own brand, I want to put an illustration of him on the cup. But an appealing product model, he is not. Since Mr. Ping is originally from China, though, I'm going to take one of the traditional approaches many Chinese products do by making a much cuter, more lovable version of of our favorite goose character. And although he'll look quite different, I'll be sure to keep in some of his defining features like his big bushy eyebrows, his little side tufts that spring out, and I think it'd be pretty funny to have him holding up his wing in kind of a shushing-like motion, like he's not gonna tell you the secret ingredient of his secret ingredient soup. I'll make some clean outlines for all of that, using a decent variety of line thicknesses for more of a playful look. And although his back is kind of gray, he's basically just pure white from the front, with that big yellow bill that can be seen for miles. Now, Mr. Ping has always struck me as kind of a quirky little guy. I can sell noodles in the lobby. <laughs> so I think it would be fitting to have him swim around in a giant pile of his own noodles. Basically, he's just like Scrooge McDuck, but he traded his ocean of coins for in the strands of cooked dough. But let me tell you, if you want a real challenge, go draw yourself a giant pile of noodles, twisting and turning and wrapping everywhere. It ain't easy, but I have to admit, the end result is quite satisfying. I suppose our goose could use a little shadow of his own so he won't feel so flat. And I usually like to add a touch of soft shading on these types of illustrations. Now, if you're like me, this kind of makes you wonder if Mr. Ping is the secret ingredient in his secret ingredient soup. All the creatures in the Kung Fu Panda universe are supposedly vegetarian, because I guess they didn't want Tai Lung knocking someone out and even devouring them on screen. But maybe old Mr. Ping here is slipping a little goose meat into that soup broth of his. I think I might have his little tail popping out the back of the pile, which just helps show that he's a small, chibi-sized goose and not a giant, long-necked freak of nature. As is customary with all cute drawings, we'll top him off with some happy cheek blushes on both sides. I'm going with a red background, since red and yellow seems to be his primary branding colors, but I will make the area around the bottom black to better help him and the noodles pop out, and perhaps an extra rim light around him for even more contrast. Now this big empty space looks like the perfect place for a logo. Normally I would probably try to find some Asian calligraphy looking font, but I'm feeling adventurous today, so I'll take a swing at hand painting my own letters for a change, making sure they feel handmade and kind of loose and quirky, with Ping being the main focal point and Mr. being much smaller. Then that whole thing can get a black stroke to match everything else, but I kind of would like to tie the character a bit more into the logo, so maybe I can take some of his scruffy feathers and add those onto the end of the P. Finally, a yellow outline will help the logo stand out, as well as complement the noodles down below. Speaking of which, we need a little steam coming off of them so they feel fresh and tasty. Even though it does kind of look like Mr. Ping made some of his own steam, if you know what I mean. Whoa. Either way, all that steam is going to rise up and spread out at the top in a cool pattern that gives the area behind the logo a little more pizzazz. This is Mr. Ping's secret ingredient soup, of course, and it's super easy because it cooks in only three minutes. Finally, we know Mr. Ping only loves one thing more than his noodles, and that is his son Po. So since this soup is all natural and organic, I think a little panda is the perfect icon to showcase that idea. So if Mr. Ping was building his noodle empire today, I think the local store shelves would be piled with something just like this. Now to check out the sponsor of today's video, Displayed. If you're still pinning up lame paper posters of your favorite anime hero in your bedroom, stop it. This plate makes amazing metal posters to show off all the cool stuff you're into. With over 2 million designs available from brands like Avatar, Star Wars, and Marvel, you're sure to find something in their huge library that truly speaks to you. And don't worry about the hassle of drilling giant holes to hang them up. Just stick this little sticker on there, slap on the magnet, and through the power of science, your disc plate will stay on the wall. It's also super easy to swap them out when your favorite show disappoints you yet again. Plus, there's this cool box that makes your poster look like it's floating off the wall. If you want that kind of look. But wait, dish boy. Now a ton of disc plates come in a new textured finish called Disc Plate Textra. You've got tactile bumpiness, 3D contours across the poster, and matte and glossy finishes on different parts of the same image. I also know that many of you watching this are artists yourselves, so I'll let you know that you can even sell your own artwork on their website and get your metal prints into the hands of people everywhere. All disc plates are printed with the highest of quality in the EU and generally arrive in five days. Check out the link down below to find the perfect disc plates for you. And 
And be sure to look at those new texture displays. They really are pretty cool. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring this video. Now we're moving on to Avatar The Last Airbender's Cabbage Guy. Now this poor man simply wants to sell his precious cabbages, but Aang and his motley crew keep destroying them unintentionally. These juveniles were arrested for malicious destruction of cabbages. Leaving him in a depressed, desolate state. These days, most cabbages are just sold in plastic wrap, which doesn't really make for a super interesting packaging design, but you can buy shredded cabbage in bags like these, which seems like the route our vegetable entrepreneur would take to keep up with the times. To me, it feels like the cabbage guy is a proud Earth Kingdom citizen, and really the pride of the whole Earth Kingdom is their massive city made from Earth. Even though in the show, our cabbage hero only had a dinky little cart, I think he deserves a proper Earth Kingdom shop from which to sell his leafy greens. And if we make this label look like his shop, everyone buying it will know where it came from. Now basically, all Earth Kingdom buildings have these really cool green roofs made from overlapping terracotta-like tiles, which likely have a good amount of grit and texture to them, since they are made by hand after all, especially the sides of the tiles, which can get pretty rough sometimes. I'll throw in a few cracks here or there for a bit of character, and a little rim light to showcase these sharp edges. The other thing you can't miss about Earth Kingdom buildings are the giant gold horn-like structures spurring off of all of them. So we'll give this cabbage shop some prestigious horns of its own, which also creates some really nice framing for whatever else we put on the package. And really the secret to making these look gold is all in adding a good amount of shine along these sharper edges, some broader flat sheen along the tops, and a little bounce reflection on the bottom of the horns. Might as well give these some metal texture too, which will help them match the same level of detail as the roof tiles. Finally, these guys will be casting some shadow on the roof below. Now since we've got a roof, we'll need a wall for it to sit on. I'm assuming most Earth Kingdom buildings are made by earthbenders, so I imagine they'd be pretty rough, you know, with a healthy amount of cracks and divots all along the surface. The Earth Kingdom is basically a desert, so I'll make the sunlight pretty harsh for this whole scene. Now I definitely want to showcase a full cabbage on here, since that is the cabbage guy's first love after all, and I really do think that bridging the building scene with the actual cabbage down below would be pretty cool, but it's almost like I need some sort of container to wrap around that, which actually gives me an idea. It looks like the one other material commonly used in these types of buildings is wood. So what about adding in like a wooden ring around all of this to kind of help frame it up, make it look a little 3D, chip out some chunks so it really feels hand carved, and add a bevel so the light bounces off those rounded edges. Then I can do that exact same thing to add a little strip of wood as a barrier between these two different zones, with the central cabbage being the thing that ties them both together. It probably does need some slightly better lighting though, if it's going to look presentable. It's actually kind of interesting, because to me, this kind of looks like a frame around a door going into the shop. So right above it seems like the perfect place to put the store's sign, using the same steps as before to make them look like 3D wooden letters. Then a smaller sign above it, with golden letters to match the horns that let people know this is shredded cabbage, just in case the see-through plastic showing the actual shredded cabbage wasn't enough. Now clearly, there was at least one graphic designer in the Earth Kingdom, but all they knew how to do was draw these little crisscross blocky line patterns, because they are literally everywhere. I don't really feel like reinventing the wheel here, so I'll just follow suit. And with some shadow for depth and some lighting along the rims, these will look like they were carved straight out of the wall. Let's get our legal text on here, letting people know their cabbage will perish if it's left out of the fridge. And lastly, I think the cabbage guy deserves his own special logo on here, which I'll place on this tiny golden square right in the heart of his beloved cabbage. And I'll engrave his likeness into that gold for all to see. And if you didn't know, his real name is Kai, and this cabbage was grown on his personal farm. And you might not have noticed it, but Kai's logo forms a secret Earth Kingdom symbol right here in plain sight. So hopefully the cabbage guy can catch a break for once and finally get his struggling veggie business off the ground with this Earth Kingdom inspired branding. Now we're branding one of SpongeBob SquarePants' greatest creations, the Pretty Patty. Basically, SpongeBob flips burgers all day at the Krusty Krab, and he thought it would be cool to offer some of the customers colored versions of their famous Krabby Patties. After being laughed out of the room though, he set up shop to sell his burgers to the masses with roaring success. But one thing you'll notice is that Sponge had his entire inventory just laying all over the sandy ground. I got sand in my buns. So I'm gonna make them a proper box to serve their sandwiches in. I'll start off making it purple because that was the main color of the original Pretty Patty brand. And since the entire focus of this business is on those colored patties, I feel like we've gotta put one on here. But my concern is that using a solid color patty might make the packaging quite bland. Plus, if you've ordered a green burger, but there's a yellow burger on your package, you're gonna automatically think that your order was wrong. So what if we go ahead and do the illustrated burger, but each part of the sandwich will be a different color that the Pretty Patties come in. However, I'm gonna stay somewhat close to the natural colors of a real burger, like making 
making the cheese yellow, for instance. That way it still kind of looks like a hamburger to people who have never seen a pretty patty, but it's also clearly unique because of the strange colors of some of the ingredients. Because really, something where everything is the wrong color is just really hard to visually read, and frankly, it's just downright ugly. So the essential idea is that pretty patties are basically dyed or painted, which goes along with SpongeBob's world really nicely since everything has a painted look. So I'll get this thing to look like a painting as well, with some messy brush marks over everything, a touch of highlights around the edges, some shadow here on the right side for depth, and finish it off with a special brush that gives it a paint spattered look. And I almost forgot the sesame seeds for our top bun, just giving those a little shadow to help them pop off the bread. Let's get some shading on our mayonnaise with a tiny rim light to help it look saucy. The burger needs all sorts of lumps to make it look like beef. This will be a thick slice of cheese right here. And we can't forget the holes because all cartoon cheese has holes. Just make the lettuce look frilly, the tomato is tomatoey, then one tiny drop shadow and the burger is done. Now it looks like SpongeBob has about the same logo design skills as your average Fiverr user selling designs for 35 cents. So I'm gonna help him out and give him something that looks a little more professional while still keeping the fun vibe of the brand. And if you do happen to ever make your own hand painted logo, be sure to change up the look of all the letters just so you don't get four T's that look exactly the same. I'll make pretty a bright yellow to make it pretty. Plus it's our main man's color of choice. And I think these could even use some of SpongeBob's holes as well, just to give it a painted look. Kinda like the uh, brushes didn't fill in all the areas perfectly. That whole thing will get a texture like the burger, some subtle shading along the ridges, and I'll add in some paint splatter off to the sides for a bit of sloppy fun. To help fill in some of the empty space here around the sides, I'll add in some of the iconic flowers seen in SpongeBob's sky. Plus flowers are pretty, these are pretty patties, so it all fits rather nicely. Now if you've been wondering how we're gonna solve the problem of showing customers which color patty they have, well I'm gonna put a neat little color picker down here at the bottom where workers can mark the color of the patty in the box. And as a bonus, this lets us use the same box for every type of pretty patty. Lastly, the background will get a little bit of that painted texture here or there to tie everything together. So if SpongeBob ever makes his way out of the sea and gets his hands on enough food coloring, he might be selling this bad boy at a burger joint near you. Now, if you wanna watch me rebrand iconic healthy foods to look like unhealthy junk food, then watch this video right here.